And Hi there, welcome to Transpone Trailer Sales and we'll be walking you through your 2022 Chaparral 30 BHS. We are just gonna start off in the back bumper here. Let's take your bumper cap off. This is where you're gonna find your sewer hose. Once fully extended, it is about 30 feet long. Just taking note of those two ears there. Those are gonna be the same two ears that hook up to your sewer outlet, sewer outlet, which I'll show you in a minute. Up at the back here, do notice this customer opted to go with, a, with an observation camera back here. That's not a standard option. The customer did have to go through a parts department for that. Also, also they did get this uh, rear stair to get up to check your seals on your roof. You notice you also, also have a two inch receiver back here. A little further down the unit. Just noticing this little flap here, whenever you get to your campsite, you are just gonna to wanna to make sure you have that opened up. That way you're able to evacuate those fumes and the smell that with the overhead fan. Whenever you do travel though, just wanting to clip that back into place, just to try and keep that dust out of the unit whenever you're traveling. Right down here is just your first sewer outlet. You're just taking that cap, twisting it off. You're taking note of those two ears there. There's gonna be the same two ears you find on your sewer hose and just locking that into place. Now this is gonna be your one uh, gray tank, your galley tank. It's just operated with this valve here. And then you have your sewer, second sewer outlet right here, which is gonna be another uh, galley, another gray tank and a black tank. You are gonna to wanna to empty the liquid waste black tank first as it's going to be your dirtiest water filled from your toilets. And, th and then you can go behind that with your other two gray tanks last, because it's typically cleaner water being filled from your sinks and your toilet, or your sinks and your shower. So it's going to be cleaner water to wash that hose out a little bit. You're going to notice this little blue line sticking out of the floor here. That is just your fresh tank drain. Take that cap off. It is going to drain your fresh tank. And then right underneath the fender skirt, over here, you're going to notice two more lines sticking out of the floor, a black uh, or a blue line and a red line. Those are just your low point drains. So if you open those guys up, it is going to drain all the water out of your water lines. Up on the wall here is just your twist lock 50 amp plug-in. You just take a note of that little silver uh, strap there and these notches. They all line up with each other. You're pushing that in, giving it that eighth turn to lock it in. And then you got the threaded collar to really lock it down. Following that cord back, you do have a 50 amp plug-in. This is a 50 amp trailer. So some campsites don't have this, but if your campsite does have this, you can plug right on in and you have no worries. If your campsite doesn't have this, we do include this dog bone adapter. It takes your 50 amp plug-in and it just changes it to a 30 amp plug-in. Most campsites should have this, so you can plug this right on in. And then, but let's say you're at home and you want to run the fridge on the driveway or you have only 15 amp service at your campsite. We also include a 15 amp adapter, which I'll show you in the front compartment or on the other side in a minute. Just keep it in mind whenever you are using this, these adapters, this trailer is supposed to have 50 amp service. So whenever you're going lower in power, just keep it in mind how much stuff you're running at once, especially when it comes to your air conditioner. You should be okay running one air conditioner because this unit only does have one air conditioner, so you can run one air conditioner on 30 amps, but if you were to put a second AC on here, 30 amps wouldn't be enough and you'd need to go up to 50. You got your hot water service port, hot water heater service port here. Whenever you first get out to your campsite, you are just gonna wanna hit this pressure relief valve. You should get that shot of water that comes out. That's just letting you know that the tank's full. Had there been no water coming out of there, it's letting you know that the tank's empty and it wouldn't be safe to fire up. Right down below here is just a little Drain bolt, you loosen that guy off, pull it off. It is just gonna drain your fresh, your uh, hot water tank. This little silver cap here is just your furnace exhaust. Whenever your furnace is running, this is gonna be blowing out hot air, so just be mindful of that. Right here, you do have your exterior shower. The way that guy works is you're gonna take your silver 751 key, which should be included with the unit. You're just gonna put it in there, give it a twist, it opens on up. You got your swivel shower head with hot and cold water just locking that back into place to close it on up. And then you will notice that you do have a black tank flush. The way that works is if you take this cap off, you have your sewer, sewer connected with your black tank open. 
Let's say you're noticing an odor or false monitor panel readings. You can just thread a garden hose into here, turn it on with the sewer connected and the valve open, and then it'll just rinse that, giving that tank a little rinse. And then you just have your city water connection right beside that. If you're out of sight with service, you can thread a water hose into here. No need to run a water pump. But whenever you are going between the different uh, options, you got your little uh, water system. So with the way I have the valves right now, you are just in regular system use using your <coughs> water pump. Let's say you want to fill your uh, fresh water tank. You're just threading the garden hose into your city water connection. And you're going to turn uh, this <coughs> left valve up and the bottom valve uh, like that. And that's gonna allow you to fill your fresh tank. But if you wanna go back to system use, you do just have to change those ba valves back again. And there is a little uh, legislative right here telling you how to do that. Or if you're wanting to use city water or winterization, <coughs> you're just turning both those valves up like so, and it'll allow you to do that. And then you're having to hook up your uh, hose for your winter for your coolant pail and then you do just have your main ca cable satellites inlets right here as well on the wall here you'll notice that you do have your electronic leveling system so the way that works is you're going to turn that guy on it's gonna show this like so you just hit that auto level button and the trailer is going to automatically level itself you can also manually run these jacks if you were to want to do so. And while this is doing its thing, you can just go and notice that you do have your battery disconnect switch to the right here. With the battery disconnect switch off, the batteries are connected to the unit. And with the battery disconnect switch on, the, batteries become, the battery becomes disconnected from the unit. We'll come back to that in a second. I will show you in this compartment here, you do have the same, exact same style compartment on the other side. This is where we carry your two 30 pound propane tanks. There's one on this side, one on the other side. You can turn either on one at a time, but turning them on does just open up the flow of propane to the unit. Whenever one runs out, you can just, let's say this one, you're running off this one right now, this one, were to run out, you can close this valve, take it out, open up the valve on the other one, and you can run off that one until this one's filled. Just undoing these straps and unthreading it from. Okay, so it should be done. Okay, so now it does say on there auto level success. So now let's say you were to want to retract them all because you're moving sites or whatever. You do just hit retract and they're all going to retract. Always making sure before you ever go to haul the trailer that the jacks are all retracted fully. In this front compartment here is mainly storage, but we also house the battery in here. Inside this box here, you do have some screws with wing nuts on the bottom. And then your solar controller is just on the wall here, but it's not really a controller, it is just a monitor. It's just gonna tell you what your batteries are at really. And then you do have a fuse for that. So if that were to ever stop working, this would be the first place I would check because you're not getting solar charging. There is a little fuse inside there. Not much else inside here. You got a light on the wall there if you're hooking up at night. On this side here is just that other propane tank. And if you open up this guy here, you notice on the wall you do have this little bar. This bar is just to get your spare tire down. So if you come down the unit here, you're gonna know this, this sticking out. Now I will note there is a safety chain underneath the tire you'd have to release first. Once that safety chain is released, 
you can just stick this bar down here and it would then allow you to run that spare tire down if you were to ever have to do so. And this is just housed inside this compartment here. You do have some cable satellite hookups on this side as well as a couple 110 plugins and this nice light. And then you do just have your 25 foot water hose with that 15 amp adapter I told you about. Not much else in this compartment here. And then we do just come to the back of the trailer again. Where again, that you have your observation camera and your ladder to get up to your roof to check your seals. To get inside the unit, you are just taking this assist handle, pushing it up, folding it 90 degrees, it'll lock into place. And you open up the door and you do have your stairs. So whenever you are bring your stairs down, they are heavy, so just keep them up. Not heavy, but they have some decent weight to them. And just release that handle, making sure your door is fully open so it can clear. And you just bring that down. You're just taking note of these pins here. It can allow you to adjust your feet to your campsite needs so the stairs sit nice and level. Taking a step on its side, first thing you notice on your left is your fire extinguisher. That's going to be just like home, pull the pin and shoot. And then just on the right here, you do have your main kind of control center. This unit is equipped with tank heaters if you want to go into that extended camping season. And then you do just have your slide out buttons. Whenever you are running the slide outs, just keep it in mind what's on both sides that you're not going to run into anything. There is three slide outs in this unit, two slide outs in the living space in the back, and then one slide out in the front bunk area in the bedroom. Once you hear the clicking, that's when you know it's fully extended. Next, we'll do the bedroom slide. That's making its way out. That's just gonna cut out whenever it's fully extended. this light switch right on the wall here this does to turn on that few entry lights we have some spit lights and then you do have your uh you do have your monitor panel system that works pretty simple and the technician that did the pre-delivery inspection was nice enough to label which each tank is filled from so you got your battery so that goes low 11.2 11.7 and 12.3 and then you got your French fresh, which goes empty a third and two thirds and then full. And then you got your black one. Your black two isn't hooked up to anything because you don't have a second black tank. And then you got your gray one and your gray two slash auxiliary. Gray one is going to be filled from bath from your bathroom sink and your shower. And your gray two slash auxiliary is going to be just your kitchen sink. Right next to that, you do have your water heater switches. So you can fire that water heater either on gas or electric. If you're to fire it on gas, you're gonna hit that button. You have to have the propane on. It's gonna try lighting itself three times. If on the third try it doesn't light, this DSI fault light's gonna come on. So at that point, you do just have to turn this switch off and then back on again to reset it. And it'll try lighting itself again. Firing on electric, just as simple as hitting that switch. It's gonna start running. And then you do have your water pump switch right next to that. Turn that switch on it's going to turn the water pump on which draws from your fresh water tank and then this button here does just switch between gray two and auxiliary so if you if you were to have another tank installed you can switch between those two but you do only have the two tanks gray two and gray one and then you just have your exterior light button as well as your awning light button turn that awning light button on it's just going to turn on that strip light underneath the awning to get the awning out you just push it up on that awning extend button and the awning is going to start making its way out. You're going to know that awning is fully extended when you see the back of the metal tube and the little flap hang down. So there you go, you got that back of the metal tube. Sometimes that flap does get stuck, but you just have to kind of retract it again bring it back out and there you go it comes down and that's when you know it's fully extended when you got the back of the metal tube and that flap hanging down 
Now if it were to start raining, you can take any arm front or rear, just pull down on it, and it's gonna change the pitch of the awning head, allowing water to then run off. This one's just a little stuck. Pulling down, it allows that awning head to go lower to allow water to then run off. Now, if you do like that angle better because it allows for more shade, you can do the same thing with the front arm. Just always making sure that you do push these arms back to straight whenever you go to bring your awning in again. That way you don't run the risk of bending anything. And if winds were to pick up, you are gonna wanna bring that awning in just so you don't damage anything. Inside this door here is just your bunk room. You can take this bump, bunk and push it up and lock it into place and it'll stay up or you can have the bunk down. You do have a TV back there in here as well. If you were to want to mount a TV on the back here as well as a satellite dish hookup. And then you do have a pl two plugins, one USB and one regular one with some storage space. And I'll note underneath this mattress here, there should be about four or five screws holding this panel into place. And that's where it's gonna give you access to your hot water tank for the bypass valves for winterization. And then just right below here is just your circuit breaker panel and fuse panel. Whenever a fuse pops, there'll be a little red indicator light telling you which one's popped. And then whenever a breaker trips, you just do have to turn it off and back on again to reset it. Take, oh, taking a step into the bathroom area, turning that light on. You do have your, your toilet and then we also do have your main GFI plug. You have test on the left. Whenever that orange light is on, it's telling you that the GFI is tripped and reset in the middle. So if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this would be the first place I'd check. And then you do have your sink with hot and cold water as well as your shower with a nice swivel head inside. And then right above the toilet, you do have this nice roof vent. You're just opening that to open that up. And then you got the center push button, to turn on the fan. Do notice that this customer did opt to go with the max air vent cover. So you can have that fan open and on whenever you want, whether it's raining or not. You have your smoke detector right above your head here. You can just push this uh, center button down and it's just gonna test it. Opening up the door, you can get inside the bedroom with your light switch on your left. All the blinds in the unit do kind of work the same way. You just kind of sit where you leave them and then to get them to retract back up, you just pull them down once, nice and easy. You do have a TV backer in this bedroom as well with two more saddle, saddle satellite hookups. You also have another vent in here, which also has another cover on it. No fan on this one. You can also, you would be able to also get a second air conditioner if you were to want to do so. You'd have to talk to our parts department about getting a quote on that. You are pre-wired for it though. Inside here is just some more storage. You do have plugins on each side of the bed and the one side of the bed does have USB plugins as well. And then you do have your fire exit. You take this tab, pull it out. This screen's gonna pop right out and then you could just take your handle and push it right on out and you can climb out of the unit. Walking down into the living space. You got your some light switches on the wall here. Just gonna turn on some of the lights in the living space. And then you do have more lights throughout on their own switches. This unit is very well lit. You notice on the wall here, you do have your thermostat. Turn that thermostat on. You are just pushing and holding that button. It's gonna light itself on. You're gonna get into fan. Now, at this point, you're just gonna be moving air around with the air conditioner. There's no heating or cooling involved. And whenever you are running the fan or the air conditioner, you do have two ways you can run it. You can run it with these louvers closed, in which case you're gonna be moving all your air through the ceiling ducting, which does go throughout the unit or you can run this with this open. This is just gonna dump all its air into this living space. Now, you can take that thermostat. If you hit that fan button, it is just gonna change the fan speed so you can go from low to high. 
hitting that button again, you're gonna go into a dry mode. Now that is just, that is gonna be the air conditioner kicking in and out with the fan, trying to take as much humidity out of the air as possible. And then you get to cool. Now this is when the actual air conditioning factor takes into effect. Hitting that button one more time just brings you into heat, which is gonna run your furnace. And then to, at any point in time, you can push up or down on the temperature selection button. And it's gonna change your set temperature. And then to turn it off, you're just holding that button and it'll turn itself off. In the dinette area, you do have two, two plugins underneath the dinette. And then just keeping in mind, you do have some travel straps here. These travel straps are just to lock all the furniture down while traveling. You got one strap on this side, another strap on the other side. And you're just clipping those together, tightening that up. And that's just gonna stop all this furniture from moving whenever you are traveling. I do recommend always running these straps because you do never know how the roads are gonna be. Inside the other dinette area, you do have a fold out cut couch. So you're just taking that, uh, you, gotta, you gotta remove the cushions, throw them off to the side. And then you're just taking the foot of the couch and pulling it out. You got two legs, you gotta flip out. And it comes down and then you can just fold that back cushion down and it folds and there's your bed. And then to get it back in, you're just taking it, folding it the same way, folding in those legs. And it just does fold back nicely into place. Again, just taking your back cushions. You do have a right and a left. Just taking note of the cutout on each side. And then let's go back into place. In your entertainment center, you do just have some storage up top. You got your, your main TV behind the TV. You do have all your plugins. You do have your sound bar, which is your stereo. Just the only thing different from your regular household stereo with your pause, skip, and volume buttons is just gonna be your zone one and zone two. Zone one's gonna be interior speakers, zone two's gonna be exterior speakers. And then right down below, you do have a nice little fireplace. Turn that on with the power button on the far right. Right next to that does just change your flame color. And then you get your rock color right next to that. And then the, butt, the second button on the left just turns the heater on. You got low and high, and then you just have a timer button on the far left, and that goes from anywhere from 30 minutes to nine hours. And then just your power button on your right just to turn that off. Again, just with some more storage on the other side. As with this side. And now you do have your recliner couches, which do actually recline. And these couches do have some lights on them just with the push of the button. And then you do have heat, uh, these do have heaters, like heated seats on them, as well as massagers. And they do have three different settings. So when you first hit that button, it's going to be on its hottest setting. Same thing with the massager, it's going to be on its most aggressive setting. And then the two settings below that are just. You have your ever chill fridge with your temperature selection down below as well as your power option so you're just hitting and holding that button to turn it off you gotta hold it for approximately 10 seconds and there you go it turns itself on off and then to turn it on you're just holding that button again And that once you hold that button for 10 more seconds, it will turn itself back on. And then hitting that button does just change your selection inside your refrigerator and then holding that button. And then at the top, you do have your refrigerator temperature selection as well, just at the far back there. 
closing this up and then you do have a travel latch for the fridge as well so that doesn't open while you're driving you got your microwave not much i'm going to show you there it's going to be pretty much just like home inside here that is just where your microwave does plug into and then you do have that overhead fan i was telling you about and then you do have your oven and your stove so the way that works is just flipping those covers back just being careful because they are glass and then you have your dials so to get it to light you're just turning it over to high hitting that sparker and it lights right on up one thing i'll say now it's firing up right now but let's say you were to turn the propane off and leave the unit for a while sometimes it can take a while just to clear all the air out of the lines so just being patient with that if it doesn't fire right away to get the oven to light you're just turning that over to the little pilot option pushing that button that knob in and just hitting it with the sparker again and as you can see it didn't light right away so you're just going to let that prime for a second and just keep trying it until it goes And there you go, you got that pilot that comes on, holding it for another second. Now that it holds its own, you can turn it up to your desired temperature. It fires right on up. And then just turning it off again. And this does also, pushing this button does turn on your uh, knobs, your knob lights and the bottom light in your oven. Always making sure you let the stove cool off before you fold this glass cover down. And inside the kitchen area, you do have some storage all around with another, another plug-in. Right above your head, you do have a fantastic fan. That works pretty simple. You're just hitting that button. It's gonna turn itself on and open it up. And then you have your open close option. So you can open it, change how much it's open. And then you can just change your speeds. And then to close it, just holding it, hitting that button again. It's gonna start making its way down. You can manually do it as well. There is a remote for that, but I think it is located inside the binder, which is not inside the unit at the moment. Uh, since the since the oven and stove and the furnace inside this unit do run off propane, we do also have a LP detector. So if this guy ever starts going off right here, propane is heavier than air, that guy's gonna start going off. If you start getting to worrisome levels, you're just gonna turn off the main supply of propane off and just open up the windows, just allowing it to ventilate out. Other than that, there's not much I'm gonna show you. That's about it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.